I'm Zach Carter, an editorial assistant here with Retirement Daily and a recent college graduate of Quinnipiac University with a bachelor's degree in journalism. The roundtable that is about to take place is an exclusive look into our new special series, The Money Talk. The Money Talk helps parents identify their children with the skills needed to become financially literate, learn personal finance, and do it in a way that keeps them accountable with their own money. Before we dig in, I'd like to introduce you to the rest of our editorial intern team. We've worked hard, hand in hand, to produce, create, and report on this new special series. Alyssa, why don't you begin? Uh, hello, my name is Alyssa Enright. I am a rising third year at Northeastern University, and I've been on co-op at Retirement Daily since January. My name is Michael Petito. I'm going into my third year at Quinnipiac University, and I started here at Retirement Daily just a couple months ago. Hi, my name is Rachel Mahoney. I'm going into my third year at Northeastern University, and I have been an editorial intern here since January. As part of this reporting experience, the interns and I were asked to talk about our own personal experiences dealing with and managing money growing up in our own households. Some perspectives differed, but some were very much the same. Michael, why don't you start off explaining how you grew up learning about money? What was the first time you became familiar with money or aware that it existed? I think the first time I was really aware of like major, not major, but like big amounts of money was probably during my first communion where I got a lot of gifts, a lot of checks, you know, I, like I, I got a serious amount of money and, you know, as a young kid who you know, $100 is like a million dollars, you're like, oh my goodness, I have all this money now. And then immediately my mom was like, it's all going into savings. So I, I learned from a young age uh, about savings and how just because you see all this money, it doesn't mean, you know, you automatically have it. So I really learned from a young age about savings and uh, just the concept of, of saving because, I mean, if I were to have all that money at once at that time, I probably would have blew it in a week. Uh, I kind of, I agree with that. So one of my earliest memories of money is also my first communion. And I remember um, that also was just kind of a big event when um, you're nine, like you're getting confirmed. Um, and I think that I received a couple hundred dollars um, as well as like some jewelry and stuff that my mom then put into um an account that I could access later um, so that I wouldn't spend it all. <laughs> um, when I was growing up, money in my head was more of a gift. It wasn't really a means for a living. You know, I would get gift cards at, at birthdays or I would, you know, get $5 and spend it on something and then I would keep the change for myself. Um, my parents tried to explain to me how to save properly. So I thought that keeping a couple of dimes or quarters in a red solo cup was going to become my retirement fund uh, one day. And, um, you know, I, I have a couple of, of cups sitting around in my room filled with filled with change. I've never actually cashed them in. But if I had to guess, it's maybe only $20, $30 worth. But it was my first real experience, both with money and saving money, which is a core principle of being financially responsible. So, you know, I was I was learning and I, I didn't really know it. So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to have that experience. Alrighty. Well, did either of you guys have an allowance? Like, did anyone want to expand on that? Yeah, I had an allowance when I was younger. It wasn't that much, but it was just, I guess, motivation to do chores. Because, I mean, what kid really wants to do chores? But, I mean, at some point, uh, probably like when I was 13, I sort of pushed away from the idea of an allowance. Because, you know, just like doing daily chores sort of just became a part of life and I felt like I didn't need to be rewarded for doing like the basic minimum and I mean a couple of years later I got my first job too so I sort of phased out of the uh, the allowance idea I guess. Anything you want to add Alyssa? Um, I don't um, I never grew up like with an allowance but one summer I think um, I did um, like used to get like a little bit of money from like my mom if I would like water her plants and that was like a big thing over like one summer when I was like very young and that I did that for like one summer. But um but yeah, but I my parents also never like made me do chores, so like 
um, so, like, I wasn't really motivated to, like, like, I guess, do chores in exchange for an allowance, and I guess, like, um, but yeah, no, I never really grew up with that allowance myself. Okay, so, next question. So, what was your first paycheck, approximately? Did you spend it all, save it, or a little bit of both? What was your biggest splurge with your first earnings from a job? I mean, my I, my first real job was a busser at a restaurant, so, like, I got paid, like, $5 an hour, so my first paycheck, I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't a whole lot, so I really just, I, I put it in my bank account. I uh, I had a deal with my mom because I didn't have access to my savings account. At the time, she put a little bit of that money into my savings account and then the rest into checking, and I, I, I don't think I spent my first paycheck for a while because I, I just had this idea of, even though it wasn't a savings account, just to save money in my checking account just in case. Yeah, so my first paycheck, uh, it came in the summer of 2020. I had gotten my first actual job. I, I worked maintenance as a pool boy at the local pool down the road from my house. And, you know, my, my first paycheck wasn't a lot of money. It was maybe $20 worth. But at the time, it was it was really exciting for me because I had actually – you know, produced and worked and put the hours in to, to get the money for myself. And I had earned it myself. And, you know, it wasn't a flashy amount of money, but I cashed it right away. And I, I went and I bought myself lunch. And, it, and, and, you know, it was a very rewarding experience just to be able to say, you know, I earned this food. And, you know, I'm the sole person who's responsible for being able to, to give myself this money and give myself this meal. And, you know, it was, it was, it was special. Um, yeah, Retirement Daily is actually, like, my first official job that I've had. So, I mean, so th I've only ever been making money from, like, my co-op job. But thus far, I have been, like, mostly just saving it and putting it in, like, my bank account to, like, save it for the future. And I don't think I've, like, splurged on much ever, except maybe, like, maybe going out to eat then, in, like, once in a while. Yeah. Um, so my first job was actually a hostess at a restaurant. So I got paid like 10 bucks an hour, but no tips or anything. Um, so I also didn't really make that much money. So I saved a lot of it. Um, and I was like a sophomore in high school when I got my first job. Um, and it was like kind of, it was like August winding down kind of COVID um, of 2020. So it there wasn't really a lot, I guess, going on. So there wasn't really much to like splurge on, I guess. Um, so I actually did a pretty good job of saving money, except for like online shopping when I was bored because COVID. Um, so I'd say that probably took quite a, a few hits, especially because like online shopping is kind of like a when you're bored, why not? You have money to spend. Um, but now as I've like, I've worked two other jobs since then. Um, and I feel like I always and making sure that I'm saving a certain percent of it. I put a certain amount of money in a Roth IRA. Um, yeah. Okay. So how would you describe your family's relationship with money in a few words? Have you noticed a change since you were younger? If so, please describe. Um, yeah, my household, my mom is like the main like financial person. Like she takes care of all like the family financials. And she's like the main bread breadwinner in the family, and um, I guess like kind of same where like my um, where like my mom grew up like mainly poor, and she had to like for most of her life she had to support um, her single father, like ever since she was like fourteen up until like um, up until his passing, and so I think uh, my mom like was always the main one to teach me about money and to like teach me how to be like financially aware because um because she was the she's always the one to like do the budgeting for the family and take care of like just all the finances and to keep track of like who's spending what and everything like that uh i think that my family's relationship with money is always uh it's been pretty balanced i mean at least on both on my my mom and my dad's side uh, I've seen them sort of have to clean up uh, some of the financial, I wouldn't want to say mistakes, but my grandparents, they weren't really like financially aware. So I had to see my parents sort of clean up that and, and help them pay 
some of the stuff and some of the things. So I think they were always really financially bound. They always knew like what to save and everything like that. I haven't really noticed a big change. It's always been the same for them. Like, like in their minds, it's always as long as everything is taken care of in the future, the present should be all right. Yeah, my parents both have accounting degrees. So I feel like I've kind of always, like just taxes, money has kind of always been a really big thing. And especially for my parents and then my sister's also falling in that path, but I'm not. Um, so I would say that I also really agree with you, Michael, like on my dad's side of the family, his parents weren't very good at spending. So like my dad kind of had to help them budget and then would kind of talk to me about some of the mistakes that they made, how to avoid them. Like I know kind of an issue um, at one point was like kind of sending money to people online and then it not being who you thought it was and like you know kind of working to make sure that like his parents and like his family were able to make responsible financial decisions um, and so he had to help them with that a lot through like I think he set them up some accounts he put like budget spending um, for his dad um, and his wife he put like and just kind of helping them um, lay out their taxes and pay everything so Uh, my relationship wasn't, you know, the same as everybody else's might have been. It was, it was a little fragile. You know, money wasn't always something that we were comfortable talking about. Um, you know, but as I grew older, my my parents realized that conversations about money were really important to have. You know, we 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 couldn't be left in the dark because at some point, my parents understood that me and my siblings were going to grow up and. We were going to become financially responsible and we we're going to have to be financially independent for ourselves so you know the, the conversations about money they weren't looked at as an option they were kind of a necessity um you know instilling those values and teaching those those very important lessons about money was was something that my parents really regarded as a high priority for us and you know when i was younger we didn't talk about it that much but as i got older those conversations became a little more fluid and my relationship with money got a little bit better and I started to understand things that I may not I might not have understood when I was a couple of years younger and you know again I'm, I'm grateful for how it turned out. Um, have you guys noticed any changes? I feel like my parents as I grew older kind of were trying to explain more like complex topics to me and kind of introducing me to a lot more on the financial side like they opened a Roth IRA account for me like when I turned 18 they had me apply for a credit card but before I went overseas, made sure I got like a travel visa so that way I could get points and get money back and learn like the best way for that and everything. So. You know, I haven't noticed any huge changes. I guess growing up probably uh, I've noticed that they try to make me a bit more financially independent, like say from maybe five years ago. You know, just as I'm, I'm growing up and I'm, I'm off in college, even in high school, like they just tried to make me more financially independent without completely, you know, taking everything away. Cause I'm, I'm still living with my parents, but you know, I, I pay for, you know, a lot of other things like gas and things like that. Uh, my dad made me get a job as soon as I turned 16, things like that. Just, just little things every so often along the way to prepare me for the real world. Um, I wouldn't say much has changed for me, like, over the years, but, um, definitely, like, with college expenses, um, like, you know, like, the money got, like, a little bit, like, tougher to, like, manage, especially for my mom, and, um, but, like, at the same time, um, like, even, in, like, in my teen years, like, when, like, when a lot of people get, like, their first job in high school, my mom mainly wanted me to focus on my education, and so she didn't, like, want me to, like, she didn't want to like make me get a job so she would usually like take care or like fund anything that I wanted at the time like she would just like fund it herself for me which I really appreciate and I, and I'm like very grateful for and so but over the years she has like tried to like um, implement more like financial education like how to like budget well how to take care of like your own credit cards and stuff like that and to make me more financially aware and be careful of like how much I spend and stuff like that. So I would say that's how it's perhaps changed over the years. 
Yeah, same. I think that, like, obviously your parents will pay, um, like, baseline expenses and everything, but, like, if I wanted to have anything else, like, if I wanted to go out to eat with my friends, if I wanted to go to, like, a baseball game, if I wanted to go out somewhere, um, it was all with my own money. So, yeah, I also got a job, like, the minute I turned 16, pretty much, and worked, I mean, up until now. Now I'm 20, and I've been working, so. All right. So financial literacy rates um, in the U.S. are falling. Are you immune to it? Um, what was special about your financial upbringing and that created this awareness? I wouldn't say I'm immune to financial literacy rates falling. I mean, I was lucky enough to, to have financial literacy education when I was in high school. I took a couple of classes, but, you know, I didn't really pay attention that much. Uh, you know, the, the, I was young. I, I realized that, you know, oh, I'm not going to need to learn about retirement funds. I'm not going to need to learn about saving in a 401k. You know, that stuff is so far beyond down the line for me. It's just, it just doesn't matter right now. But I'm also lucky that I had parents who really stressed financial independence, you know, since the day that I could open my first checking account. You know, if, if I didn't know how to do something, my mom would teach me or, you know, she just kind of threw me right into the fire. And, and I learned as I went. And, you know, I made mistakes, but I made mistakes during times in my life where, the stakes weren't very high. So I was able to learn in these low leverage situations. And, you know, it, it really prepared me for, for life as an adult and financial independence and, and responsibility. And, you know, the classes that I took in high school helped as well. So I was very fortunate to have a good situation in, in the way that I was raised and the way that I was exposed to money growing up. I don't think I'm immune to it because I'm not, I'm not really completely based on all of financial literacy. I think that retirement daily has definitely helped a lot. And, you know, I'm, I'm aware of the basics, but beyond that, I'm not too in jest with uh, financial literacy. So I definitely think there's areas to improve upon. But I definitely think that my upbringing has definitely helped to learn the basics that have helped me up to this point. But there's definitely a lot more to learn. Yeah. I mean, when I was growing up, like, even though my parents were accountants, I didn't want anything to do with money and I didn't want them to teach me anything. And then like kind of right before I went to college, like, for example, like even when I was 16, like my parents filed my taxes for me. Like I didn't know how to freaking do my taxes. So when I was 18 and then right before I went off to college, um, my mom was like, hey, let's file your taxes. So we went on TurboTax and then we did my taxes for the first time. So I feel like once I actually really wanted to once I really wanted to learn it and once I was putting the effort into like actually understanding the topics that they were trying to explain to me, like financial literacy just kind of went like all the way up because like as soon as you're actually interested in learning about it, um, it kind of sticks. Like for example, something that my dad and I are working on right now is we're working on to explaining the differences between um, like European and American economies to decide where I might want to live after college, depending on my salary and which con like which um, financial systems will offer more benefits based on my salary, um, because you know socialist versus completely capitalist and everything. So um, well, capitalist, socialist, whatever. Um, but yeah, so I feel like I definitely like my parents also lived overseas, so I just have they have a lot of experience and they have a lot of wisdom to share with me about everything that they've learned throughout their life. And as I've grown up and wanted to actually learn it. Um, like, for example, like my dad explained to me the stock market and like I was like, hey, can you explain to me how a stock's value is determined and how it, what's the calculation for that? Um, so I kind of just anytime I was curious, anytime I was asking questions. Um, so I feel like financial literacy for me, obviously, is I'm not perfect. Like, I don't know everything um, and I'm still learning, but I think I'm pretty good. I'm pretty well off because I've put in the effort. So. I feel like there's not really one specific topic, but I think, like, honestly, I'm proud of the way that, like, I have grown. Like, I went from being completely disinterested, I wanted nothing to do with money, to being really interested in wanting to learn, like, how financial systems work. I wanted to write about it. I wanted, and, you know, I did write about it, and I have been, and I really wanted to learn about it. So I would say that, like, kind of that switch, um, like, and my motivation was really helpful for, you know, helping with my financial literacy and motivation. I... So I definitely need to have a lot more education about the stock market. Um, I know kind of the basics about it, um, but like the recent question that I asked my dad was, 
how do you calculate a stock's value? And so that's kind of what he's going to teach me next. Um, so I want to learn a lot more about the stock market so that I can start um, investing in that further than what I've already invested. I've invested in an S&P index uh, 500. Um, I have two shares. Um, and that's been doing pretty well as well. But I want to learn more about like the specifics about the stock market and kind of just the specifics about like taxes as well. And um, also just specifically about the different countries kind of is just what I'm also really interested in. I want to learn about different economic systems and which one will be best for me. Um, I think something that I'm most proud about is that, um, and like, I feel like not many people like get this lesson, but like my whole life, my mom has been telling me to be like an independent woman. And so, and a lot of that I think is tied to like finances. And she always told me that like, that like I shouldn't rely on anyone financially. I should only rely like on myself and make sure I could take care of my own basic needs and wants. And she always told me that like that like you don't need to be like rich, so you don't need to make a lot of money, but you do need to make enough money to like for you to be happy. And so you need to determine like how much do you want in life to like make that, I guess, like amount of money. And I think that like was a very important lesson because like even though like financial literacy wise, like I feel like I definitely need to improve in so many aspects, like even with some basic stuff I still don't know yet. But I think that was like always like a good foundation to have in my mind to encourage me to like like get a career and make sure that like one day I do know about like finances and budgeting and like to take care of myself financially. Um, I think maybe I could just like even just like learn more about the basics like stuff like taxes, how to like take care of your own credit card, like how to open like a checking account and stuff like that. Like even just like the basics I could like definitely use some more like growth in. I'm personally just just most proud of the initiatives that I've taken to become more financially responsible. You know, I, just a couple months ago, I didn't even have my own savings account. All the money that I ever had was put into a checking account. And, you know, it was probably not a smart idea. But since then, I've taken the steps and I've taken the initiative to become more financially independent. And I've opened savings accounts. And, you know, there, there's really no better feeling than seeing that interest payment hit in your bank account, you know, after a month of saving and, and realizing that the money that you have is making more money and understanding the fact that, you know, this is how you kind of make a living for yourself. And this is how a retirement account is supposed to look. So, you know, I'm just proud of kind of the, the steps that I've taken on my own. I mean, obviously I was raised pretty well and, you know, I learned a lot from a lot of people, but at the same time, kind of doing it yourself is one of the most rewarding feelings. Something that I might want to work on as I get a little bit older is is trying to, to diversify that money a little bit, you know, maybe start investing for the first time or, you know, opening different accounts where I can have my money in different places. But, you know, I'll cross that bridge when I get there and, and you know, hopefully I'm ready for that as as the time comes. But for now, I'm, I'm mostly proud of the steps that I've taken on my own. Um. For me, I think that my proudest uh, for moment for money and uh, for my upbringing is just the fact that I'm able to know how to save and to always have at least a decent amount of money, not necessarily on you, but like in your bank account, just in case. Like I always have at least a good amount of money tucked away just in case anything happens because you never know. So it's always good to have that, and I feel like I, even without just in case emergencies, I always have a good amount of money in my bank account. I don't overspend. I don't try to overspend, because again, you never know what what's gonna happen out there. So I always feel like as long as I'm not overspending, which I've never really gotten into that habit, if I'm just saving all the paychecks I get, one day that's going to pay off. I think that. Um, as I mentioned before, I think I know the basics of financial literacy, but I can definitely improve in a lot of different aspects. Um, probably how taxes work. I know the basics, but that's that's pretty much it. I don't know a whole lot about how the stock market works. Again, the basics, but that's pretty much it. So, And getting into the world of credit is something that 
I need to get started on eventually. So just, I know the basics, but I need to dive in a little bit more. It's something that I've started. So I have a Roth IRA already set up that my parents uh, set up and helped me begin investing in. I think that it's really important. I mean, my parents have kind of raised me from the start saying you need to start saving for your retirement. My dad always said, like, the earlier the better. Like, I forget the exact quote that he said, something about pinch it a little bit until it hurts, like put a little bit more into your savings. Um, so that way it can pay off in the end. It's that you'll build up that line of credit as well. It's not something that I've started yet, but it's definitely something that I want to start down the road, maybe after a graduate college or maybe even before. It's definitely something that I've thought about, but I haven't started it yet. Uh, again, I've been saving, but I haven't been saving for retirement, so definitely that's something that I want to get on. Um, yeah, I'm basically in the same boat as Michael, where, like, I haven't started um, saving for retirement yet, but that is also definitely something that I want to have more on my radar and learn, like, what are the best strategies, like, for me personally that I could use um, to, like, save for retirement. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank my mom for, like, always teaching me that, like, one day I do need to be financially dependent on myself and like I think for just like not hiding any sort of like um like just showing me the reality of that like though money can like cause you stress and trouble like um like as long as you like save and as long as you budget like like things will work out and that sometimes it is okay to like treat yourself and maybe splurge here and there but also be very money cautious and just for um yeah, and for, of course, just giving me a, like, a social, like, um, an economic, stable, like, household also. I think that was also very um, important. Um, I'd like to thank my parents for kind of just, like, feeding it into me until I listened. Like, they kind of would just keep repeating and saying, like, well, it's tax season. You want to sit down and teach you how to do your taxes? And, you know, until I finally listened and accepted the help. So thank you for not giving up on me. <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank them for teaching me the basics about money talk and financials, and I'd also like to thank them for giving me a financially balanced life. I mean, there were ups and downs that my parents faced financially, but as a kid, I was never aware of them. I was always in a place of, I guess, happiness as a, as a child. Like, I never knew about any of the, the ups and downs that my parents faced financially, so I'd like to thank them for a financially balanced life and you know just keep me on the up